All right, on this episode of the LPDS, we got more hotline calls. We get into a little bit of the Yankees. We talk about the post office. We talk about some other LPDS current events going on in the universe. Of course, we got a tremendous little Nick Cage facts for you. All coming up right now. All right, Jabronis, we're back. Welcome back to the Bretty Podcast Diary Show. I'm your host, Labretti. The show that talks about nothing but finds the lessons in everything, and we try to have a good time doing it. I'm trying to plug my computer in because I forgot to earlier. Hope everybody had a good week. Mine was okay. A lot of good progress on on the spearhead leadership side when it comes to researching and and coming up with ideas to revamp the the content plan and things like that. So I got a lot of good progress done there. So that was great. Work wise, other you know, my other job, no comment. Uh got some decent workouts in. Um yeah, it was a pretty it was a pretty good week. Coming off of the of the previous week where I just had zero motivation whatsoever. Um, this was a good week for sure. Not that I, not that I relied on motivation or anything like that, but it was just more stuff got done. I felt a little bit better about it. So it was nice. I will say this, not to pat myself on the back, but getting, getting stuff done, even when you don't have the motivation or the will and you don't want to do it, still getting those things done. Um, puts you in such a better position for the future for the weeks after. Um, if it wasn't for that, I would be way behind on stuff and I would probably start to slowly spiral down into a lazy, lazy uh, routine. So um, that's a little bit of like a lesson for everybody else out there too. And again, this is not to not a brag or anything uh, by any means, but we all, we all don't want to do shit in our lives it's just reality but sometimes we still have to do it anyway so just get it done um and you'll be better off for it i would you know i wish somebody slapped me upside the head earlier other than my parents to tell me to do that when i was younger because you don't listen to your parents doesn't matter what they say i'm sure they did tell me that earlier in my life but you don't listen to your parents They should have had somebody else that I look up to tell me that. Like a celebrity, I mean, look up to. I look up to my parents, but you don't listen to your parents. It doesn't matter how much you look up to them. You don't listen to them. But some sort of celebrity figure and not a family member, you know, get that that uh, celebrity testimony in there. But, yeah, I'm trying to think of who I would listen to besides, you know, the great one, Nick Cage. And I don't know. I don't know, but I should have listened to anybody who was telling me this advice back in the day because I would have got a lot of, a whole lot more shit done in my life. Instead, I'm very good at procrastinating. I'm really good at it. I will brag about that. I have a skill set where I can procrastinate and in the very last second put together an absolute masterpiece of whatever project I need to do. And if only I started that project or that task earlier, what a masterpiece it actually would have been with all that extra time. But I don't do that. That's not, that's not what I do. I procrastinate usually, but I'm getting better at it. Anyway, good week overall. Um, we did have a little bit of a, I don't I don't know what to call it these days with London boy 
It's not a situation. It's not a do to do. It's becoming just an, an annoying problem. It really is because it's getting to the point where I don't even like going outside my own property anymore for fear that he's going to be outside and he's going to come across the street right through traffic. It doesn't matter if cars are go driving through or, or what. He's just going to walk through. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I could be getting in my car, driving to the hospital to drive my wife to give birth to our kid, and he'll stop me right there in the driveway to talk me, talk my ear off for 15 minutes about nonsense, stuff that's not real, stuff he claims is real, but is clearly not. Because he's, he's, there's still no evidence of girlfriend. There is still no evidence that he's actually in job interviews and getting a job. Like he said, he told me last time he was going to do that. No evidence of turning a new leaf whatsoever. He just comes across the street and asks for extra money. Until this past week, <clears throat> excuse me, where I was going outside one afternoon to mow my lawn. Now, I had a plan. I couldn't do it over the weekend when I wanted to. When I wanted to mow the lawn, it was raining, so I couldn't mow the lawn. Pretty simple, right? So I had a schedule. I'll do the backyard one day, and I'll do the front yard another day. That way, it'll take me only 15 minutes is it fin uh, hello 15 minutes each side and i could break it up no problem i don't have to uh spend too much time during the, the during the school week uh to to take care of it now i had the plan for the front yard it was a, it was an afternoon it was going to be an afternoon mow because i had stuff to do in the evening after work and i wanted to get it done early Lunchtime, quick mow, eat lunch, back to work. It would have taken me less than my normal, like taking a normal lunch hour. But I get a call for work. Last minute call, unscheduled. They forgot to add me into this call. And we need to review some documents. So I couldn't mow the lawn in the afternoon. That call took five hours. That was a five-hour call reviewing some documents and what have you. So by the time I got done with that, it was the workday was over. I had to run to the gym to knock out my workout. And then I had to run back and I had a race to feed the dog, mow the front lawn, shower, and I had an appointment in the uh, right after that. So I'm, a, I'm racing the clock here. That's what I'm saying. I don't know where I'm going with this, but that's what I'm going with this. I had a race. So I have the mower on full speed. It's a pretty quick mower. I got it from Crazy Carol and JPL3. They And they rarely used it. So it's in good condition, good speed, good power. It's a top-tier lawn mower. So I'm, I'm going to race through this. It'll take me almost no time. And then I'll be able to to jump in the shower and get on my way. Well, of course, of course, because I couldn't mow the lawn in the afternoon where I had more time, I go outside, I turn the mower on. I'm mowing now. Now, anybody who's ever mowed a lawn before knows that the mower's loud. And you don't just stand there with a mower on having conversations with people. They're not outside to have conversations with you. They're outside to mow their lawn. But LBD, right over his head, doesn't care. I don't think he care. I don't think he doesn't care. I just don't think he understands that. He's missing that. And he's out there doing God knows what in his property. And he looks over and he and he like a sharpshooter pinpoints me. And that's that he's just he's he's sweeping 
his his driveway and he's pulling weeds and then he's sweeping the weeds with a broom and a dustpan. And he sees me and he just drops the broom as if his hands fell off. Like it was instant. Like if I'm holding the broom here in YouTube land and this is it's the pen and he's and he's brewing and doing this and all of a sudden he sees me. That's it. That's how quick it was. And he walks right over across the street and then he starts. He's standing on top of me, on top of me while I'm mowing in the corner of my yard. And I'm tucked in a corner. I have my house is buttoned up here. The side of my house is here. And then I have the back of my fence here. So uh, there's an it's an L shape. If you're looking in YouTube land, it's an L shape. And I'm in the corner of the L, the inside of the L. So I'm trapped. And he's right on top of me talking as if like I can hear him I'm talking in a normal, you know, volume, not yelling. We're not saying, hey, you might turn that off for a second. He's just talking. That's all I heard. And at this point, I'm getting a little frustrated now. I'm trying to keep my cool. I'm trying to keep my cool because I understand there's. I'm trying to empathize with the situation at hand. But I turn the mower off and I go, LB. Like, you see I'm mowing the lawn. You th I can't hear you, man. Come on. And he goes, oh, he goes, oh, sorry, buddy. Uh, can I borrow your lawnmower when you're done? Now, realistically speaking, I had no gas left. I, this was, I, was, I was using my last drops of gas, and I'm going to go get more gas later on. So I had an actual reason why, uh, like an easy reason, I, I sort of I should say, because I had other reasons why I don't want him to use my mower. Um, but easy reason was that you know I was like, sorry man, I got I, this is all the gas I have. That's why I'm out here rushing through it now before I run out of gas. And he's like, well, the guy next door, well, you know, I asked him and he wouldn't let me borrow it. Uh, I have no idea why. And I was like, listen, maybe if I get gas, maybe I'll let you borrow it, uh, or I'll. You know, we'll take care of the, you know, help you take care of the lawn. Um, and I was trying to be nice and I was trying to not to directly tell him no again, because I can't, I can't imagine a guy like that. If I, if he gets any more no's from people, uh, I, you know, who knows what's going to happen to the neighborhood. So I was trying to be nice and, and thoughtful and empathetic to the situation, but also I had to let, you know, I had to let him know, like, LB, this is not okay. You can't like, you can't make the neighborhood afraid to leave their houses because they know that you're going to be out there coming to to handhandle and take 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 take. You got to stop doing it, dude. Okay, I know you're going through a tough time. Okay, but you got to do something different to get out of the tough time. Clearly, this approach is not working. Clearly, whatever you're doing to quote unquote look for jobs is not working. It's really because I don't think he's looking for jobs. Again, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but I don't think he's looking for jobs. I think he's just hanging around doing whatever. So I was able to finagle my way out of that situation a little bit okay, a little bit unscathed. But the next day, of course, right in the middle of a call, I'm on the call. He's ringing the bell. Randy's barking, going crazy. Look, I can see him on the ring camera looking through my window to see if I'm there because he hears the dog. And he just he just hanging out there 15 minutes, 15 minutes this time after I texted him again. I am on a call. I will get to you after. I will talk to you after. I'll call you after. And he's reading the messages. And he's just not picking up what Sarji is putting down over here. And as much empathy and, and, 
and understanding is I try to have everybody has a breaking point. Everybody has that point where they just get tired of the little bullshit that we got to deal with. And I know this is a first world problem. I get it. People are far worse off than I am with, with stuff going on in their lives. But crap. I want to be able to just walk outside and not have to literally look over my shoulder and quickly come up with a reason why I can't give this guy free money or free goods. I don't trust him with my lawnmower. I mean, that's insanity. He could hurt her. If, I, if, I'm, if I have my JPL3 hat on right now, the Ranger Rick hat, if he gets hurt using my mower, he could try to sue. He won't win. It's crazy. I know what people think. Oh, he's not going to sue. He'll never win. It doesn't matter if they'll win or not. They're not going to win. Obviously, I would win. But people like that are going to sue. People so desperate for money, and, and if he got hurt using my lawnmower... Yeah, that's an easy opportunity for him to try to get something out of it. Absolutely. It sounds crazy, and I know there's no likely. Why would he ever do that? He's He would do it, okay? We're not talking about logically thinking people right now. We're talking about people so hard up for cash that they're knocking on their neighbor's doors incessantly Asking for money to the point where nobody wants to leave their houses. So, yeah, do I think there's a chance he would do something like that? Yeah, I do. I'd win. It'd take a little while to go through the court process. I'd win, and he'd be worse off than he was before. But I'd still think he'd do it. I'd also think he would take the lawnmower and sell it. And 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 the creature I was talking to him about, it, he brought up a good point. He's like, yeah, the, who who's to say he won't go pawn it off? And then be like, I never borrowed your mower. Or it broke and I had to throw it in the garbage or some other reason. So I think he'll I think he'd do that too. I also think he might break it. Hey, I tried to do this. I tried to to push the lawnmower over this piece of metal and it got stuck in the mower and it broke. Here you go. It's useless now. I can't use it anymore, so I'm giving it back. I can see that happening. What I can't see is him borrowing the lawnmower, mowing his lawn, no problem, and bringing it back in a timely fashion. I can't see that happen. So, but I, I just feel compelled to help this guy. I don't know why. It's probably a sucker's bet. I'm probably setting myself up for, for future disappointment and failure with this. But something about it, it's like, it's almost like the big man upstairs in red is, is th just thrusted this, this test upon me, this opportunity upon me. Knowing that Christmas is coming soon, and if I want to get the presents I'm looking for for Christmas, here's a here's a a grand opportunity to test your you know kindness and ability to help others. I don't know, I, but I just feel like I can't just let this guy go. I can't just let him go to the wolves like this. Not really the wolves. He lives in a house. He's not a bum yet. So I'm trying to figure out ways to help out, but also protect my own space and not be taken advantage of and not be consistently, consistently hounded for more and more and more. So I was originally... I, I thought maybe, okay, I'll just go one day and I'll mow the lawn myself and it'll be done. 
But then I was thinking that's a time suck on my off time. I don't know exactly how bad his backyard situation is. Who the hell knows? I see the front yard, and it's not great. I can't imagine what the backyard is like. So then I thought I will call my landscape guy that I use periodically and just be like, hey, my man, go over this house, mow this lawn, come to my house for the payment and take care of it. So that's what I'm going to do. It's been raining most of the rest of this week. We had some bad storms here. And luckily, the worst of it missed me. It was more north. Uh, but we had some bad rainstorms, so it hasn't happened yet. Uh, but I did tell LB, I was like, listen, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to get this guy over here. He's going to mow your lawn. This is a one-time thing. You don't have to pay for it. I'll cover this time. But that's it. And I told him, I was like, that's it. I can't do any more. We're not doing this anymore. This is, it has to end. Now, do I think it'll end? No. No, I don't. But I, it has to be said, just like him constantly coming over here asking for extra money, I have to constantly repeat that there is no more help. There is no more, there's no money. Okay, there's no goods, there's no services, there's no more freebies. Okay, if he wants help researching jobs, if he wants help looking for, you know, thera therapist to go to, if he wants help looking for uh, someone to chat with and vent to, I'm open to all of that. Okay? Because sometimes all you need is people to talk to. They say eight minutes. I saw this study that they did. Who's they? I don't know. Doctors. Therapist. And they said an eight minute conversation by someone who's down and out and looking to go, you know, a dark direction with their lives. Eight minutes venting and talking to a friend and a friend just being there with them talking. Eight minutes gets them out of that funk. That's it. Eight minutes snaps you out of out of the out of the depressing feelings you're dealing with, the dark mental state you might be in, the sadness, whatever you're feeling, the anger, all the negative feelings and emotions you got going on, eight minutes. So if you see me, by the way, if you hear me texting, if I text you. Or shoot you an email or whatever, and I just say, hey, you got eight minutes to talk or to hang out? That's what I mean. I need I need out of this thing. And I will, I rarely ever, I don't know if I've ever felt like that to where the point where it's like, man, I'm so down and out. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. I don't know if I've ever felt like that. Like I said, I... I got an ego. I love my life too much to ever do anything like that, to do anything harmful. But if I was ever in a state where I didn't want to get more sad or depressed or something, yeah, give me eight minutes. And the same goes for you folks too. Anybody out there in, in LPDS land, shoot me a text. You got eight minutes now? I know it's important. So no matter what I'm doing, unless I'm also doing something very important with my life, which is rare. Yeah, I could stop playing video games or I could stop looking at the computer or stop watching a movie and I could give you eight minutes. So let me know. So I could give London Boy eight minutes. Okay. I don't mind doing that. If that's what it's going to, if that's what he may need to help him get through that day or the week or whatever. Okay. We need to work on his uh, prioritization of of needs, I guess you can say. Because if he comes over all the time asking for freebies constantly, 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 he's got to become the boy who cried wolf. Then when he says, hey, I just need to talk, most people are going to think, yeah, 
every time he says that, he just wants to, he just needs to talk about asking us for free money. So uh, we need to have a you know a conversation. There needs to be that that communication barrier broken through to where like, hey, he understands when I need need something, I could go to to Libretti. But otherwise, I got a prior like I can't just go every single day and think everything is important and whatever. So we gotta we gotta figure that out. But I, I could be there. I'd like to be there to help him in some other ways. I also have to protect my own peace of mind and safety and, and, and comfort and what have you, too. So that's a balancing act. And I know there's people out there that are hearing all these stories about LB across the street and are like, just ignore him. Just say no. Just screw him. What are you wasting your time with that dude for? I don't know. Okay. I, because if I was in that position and I had neighbors in a, in a HOA community who are all doing decently well and I'm, and I find myself in a situation where the, where the lady, the breadwinner of the family has died supposedly. And I have a, I have a, uh, a mental disorder and it's tougher for me to find work and even the work I can do a lot of people are not comfortable hiring me because I am higher maintenance to say the least I'm gonna tr yeah I'm gonna go around and asking people for help I'm gonna go around and ask people for help okay and if I were in that position and I go to my neighbor, who I know. I would, you know, and all they do is ignore me and say no and turn their back on me eventually and stop responding to me altogether. And because of my situation mentally, I don't understand that why I'm like why that is. Because I the social cues, it's not there. It's not there for him. There is no social, like he doesn't understand that. Not that he doesn't care. He just doesn't have, he doesn't have that connection. So he doesn't think he's doing anything annoying or, or rude or uh, uncomfortable or, or wrong or whatever. He can't see that. So all he sees is him reaching out for help and everybody else ignoring him or saying no or giving him shit. So I, I, I don't know how I would react if I were in those shoes, if I was in that position. But I would like to think there would be somebody out there that would at least try to help me a little bit. And if I could be that guy to try to help him out a little bit, I'll be that guy. Because again, I don't know how I would feel if I were in his shoes. Now, am I going to still keep talking about the funny shit that goes on with him week in and week out? Yeah, I'm going to shit talk him. We're going to have fun here and make our jokes and have a good time. Because that's all it is. It's fun. It's, a, it's jokes. It's a good time. It's not real. I mean, it's real, but it's not, you know, I don't hate the guy. I don't think he's a bad person. I just think he's lost a little bit. And he's providing some entertainment in my life. Now, when the when it when it crosses the threshold that I don't feel safe safe, then we're going to stop with the jokes and we're going to take care of business. But that's not the case right now. Um so, we're going to roast a little bit. We're going to have fun. But we're going to try to help. All right. And I think that's the London boy update I got for today. Yeah, that's it. I wanted to keep this a short episode, but London boy keeps me going. Um, real quick. Stop doing this. I got my notes on my phone and it, and whatever. And I'm my fat sausage fingers. Keep dicking around with the screen and, and opening up new notes here. So stupid. Anyway, um, 
I got a situation, not a situation with the post office. It's probably a situation everybody's dealing with these days because the post office stinks. But the post office keeps delivering the wrong packages to my house and my packages to the wrong house. Now, let me explain a little bit here. My address is a long number. One, two, three, four, five numbers. And then the street is a name. You don't really, it's not a common name. It's not like Smith Street or, or Martin Luther King Boulevard or some common street name that you've seen before. Ninth Ave or anything. No, it's a very unique name. In fact, I've only seen it here before. And that's it. There's two of them here because this city is stupid and they named the same street anyway. Then there's another person in my in my same uh, HOA community and they had the same street number as me, but a different street altogether. In fact, it's a street that's like two streets behind me or in front of me. Now, this guy's street name is not even close to the street name that I live on. It's different letters. They start with different letters. doesn't sound the same. You can't read it and mix it up. Nothing. Not even close. The only thing that's the same is the street number. Let's call it 29. Let's just say 29. Yet, for three, four weeks now, I've been getting their HelloFresh orders every single time they're delivered. And as of most recently, they just got a package that my parents sent to me. They got it. They got it at their doorstep. Now, a couple things here. Number one. I can see the post office making mistakes. I see delivery people making mistakes. It happens. Whatever. But when, when you're told about the mistake, you usually try to fix it, right? And this is what happened. We told the post office and we told Amazon Prime. They were doing it too recently as well. Hey, this is the wrong street. Look, see that? Don't do it anymore. Don't come, don't bring it over to that house. And they both they all, all said the same thing. Oh, I don't know why the GPS took me here. I don't know either. That's fine. It sounds like a mistake, right? Go do it. Go do better. Go learn from your mistake. Be better. No worries. Have a good one. The next time they come back again, wrong package. Hey, oh, sorry, the GPS took me here. I, I'm getting annoyed now. All right, don't let it happen again. That's twice. Third time. Oh, I don't know why the GPS keeps taking me here. Listen, buddy. I don't know why you keep listening to the GPS. You know it's going to take you to the wrong place. That's first of all. That is first of all. You know it's taking you to the wrong street. Stop listening to the GPS. Stop it. You're like Michael Scott driving into the pond because it said to turn right. Think for yourself, please, all of you. Number two, how is the post office or the delivery teams, how are they delivering packages and goods anymore if they're not looking at the street name? Because all you have to do is when you turn on Smith Street, and you see on the package, it says Jones Street. You're not on the right street. The, the complete and utter lack of using your brain in this day and age is astounding to me. It's astounding to me. You can't put two and two together. This is what we talk about all the time on this show. Critically thinking, analyzing the situation, gathering the data, analyzing it, and making a judgment call, making a decision. 
You have a package that says 22 Jones Street. Your GPS keeps taking you to 29 Smith Street. Why do you think you could just you just take that package out? Oh, well, this is what it says on the GPS. This must be the right place. I'll just dump this package here. You saw the street you turned on. You had to have seen the street you turned on. Unless you just close your eyes and and blindly listen, use the force to listen to the GPS and get directions. You had to see the street. So when you turn on Smith Street and the packages for Jones Street, what is going through your head? I just tell me, what are you thinking about? Are you thinking at all? I, I want to give people the benefit of the doubt, but damn, do you look very stupid right now. Okay, you come off as very, very stupid because this is now the third and fourth time that you've delivered packages to the wrong address. The same two houses, by the way. That's another thing that you haven't picked up. You're incorrectly de delivering packages to the same two houses that just need to swap. So don't, how many more times do you have to deliver to the wrong house before you realize, hey, let me double check this package because I delivered to this house before and it was wrong before. How many more times do you have to be completely clueless and useless at your job before you realize you're completely useless and worthless at your job. Now, it's not a terribly big deal. Obviously, it's another first world problem. I'm getting my packages. I've become friends with that neighbor two streets down. I practically know what they're ordering for dinner every week because I'm getting their Hello Fresh boxes. And luckily, JPL3 and Crazy Carol only sent me some Easter candy and a couple of Rifleman magazines. So I wasn't necessarily losing out on too, too much stuff of importance when they when they got my package. But what, what just bothers me more and more, and I'm trying my best to not let it get to me because I can try, I try to control the controllables. That's what I tell myself every day. Libretti, control the controllables. Don't get hyped up and angry and lose your shit over the things you can't control. And stupid people I can't control, unfortunately. But stupid people are everywhere. They're taking over this entire world. I was in the grocery store last week. I don't know if I talked about this or not. And I had alter, not altercations, but issues with stupid, clueless people. One was a lady driving in the parking lot behind me in my big truck, almost hit me when I was trying to turn left because she didn't care. She just was trying to weave around me to the left when I was trying to turn left into an, into an alley or a lane you know, a parking lane, clueless. As if I, as if I was invisible, if, if I, was, I was John Cena driving in a truck and then all of a sudden she just sees me. Like in Feel the Dreams, when the, when the ginger brother-in-law from Rookie of the Year or Little Big League or whatever he was in, he was also the bad guy in, in First Kid with Sinbad. When he's looking out of the field, and there's no nobody there, and he thinks Kevin Costner has gone crazy, and he's like, "What are you looking at, dude? There's nobody here. There, there's nothing. You're watching an empty field, brother." And then all of a sudden, the kid chokes. You know, he he shakes the baby and he tosses her, and she's choking. And all of a sudden, Moonlight Graham crosses over the threshold, and now he appears. And then out of nowhere, the ginger sees all the ghosts playing in the field. And he goes, when did all these players get here? That's what this lady was like in the, in, in the, in the parking lot. As if I was Moonlight Graham going to save that child from choking to death. 
the way her face was like, oh, where did you come from? Honey, I drive a extended cab Toyota Tundra to compensate for my tiny pee-pee. It's the biggest truck in the lot. It's right in front of your stupid face. Don't give me that look like you didn't see. And if you didn't see it, give me your license. I'm tearing it up. You shouldn't be driving. And then I have another uh, do to do inside the grocery store with a clueless cartsman. He's there with his wife. She's running the show. She's clearly running the show. And he's just lollygagging around behind her, looking up at the sky like a mouth-breeding, slack-jawed idiot. And she's directing him. Oh, we got to go to aisle four and this and that. Four aisles in a row. Four aisles in a row. We're, we're crossing paths in the lanes. Okay, so he's going down the aisle. I'm going up the aisle. And then we switch to the next aisle and do the same thing. And around and around we go. Four aisles in a row. This is not an exaggeration, folks. Four of them. Where we're crossing paths and his wife stops to go look at something on the shelves because she's running the show. And he just parks the cart diagonal across the entire lane. So you got the cart and this guy standing there across the entire grocery lane. It's how aisle, excuse me. So nobody could get through on either side. And he's just looking around, waiting for his wife to be done running the show. First time, excuse me, sir. He goes, oh, sorry about that. No problem. Sometimes we do that stuff. I do too. I get it. Second aisle, same thing. Up, up in the clouds. Hey, sir, it's me again. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Groundhog Day, by the way, for him. The way he responded, I guess I was in Groundhog Day. The way he responded as if it was the first time this happened in the last 25 seconds. Third aisle. Sir, me again. Oh, sorry about that. He's clueless, okay? All right? Nothing. There's nothing going on inside his head. There's no additional emotion. There's no, oh, I can't believe I did it again. I've really got to get better at that. Nothing. It was the same exact response every time. I changed my response. I changed my tone. I changed my attitude a little bit because I was getting visibly frustrated, as you would when you have the same guy making the same mistake over and over again. But not him. Same reaction every time. Same response. As if it was the first time it has happened. Like 10 second Tom in 50 first dates. Now we get to the fourth aisle. I'm already angry. I'm already a little bit peeved. Because I like to keep a pace at the grocery store. I like to be in and out. I don't mind that there's a lot of people... You know, and I can mingle in society. Sometimes I'll have fun conversations with the old ladies or whatever. It's it's fine, whatever. I know people don't like the grocery store and the crowds and stuff. I don't usually mind it. What I do mind is clueless, inconsiderate people. That's what I do mind. So I try to keep an even, you know, even keel, even head throughout the time I'm there. Because I do know most of the time you can't control what's going on around you. You can only respond to it. So I'm usually fine, but this guy was directly interfering with with me. So it was a little bit more in my control at this point, how I reacted anyway. So we get to the fourth aisle. And uh, wouldn't you know it, the same thing happened again. The boss wife is over there running the show, looking at pickle jars or whatever she needed. And he's right there diagonal. And then and finally, I was I was livid. I was seething inside. And I tried to respond as calm and cool and collected as possible. But I had to let him know. I had to let him politely know what a absolute fucking moron he's he's been. And I'm sorry, Terrence, I know it's a family show, but I I wanted to I wanted to smother him with a loaf of bread. That's what I wanted to do with this guy. I was just the the repetitive 
stupidity. So I, I was like, I just so, sir, is everything all right? He's like, yeah, why? Like, again, the response of like, had no clue why I would be asking, like as if this was the first time he saw me. And I was like, we have done this four times now. How many more times are we going to do this before you stop blocking the aisles? And he goes, oh, sorry about that. I didn't even realize. I, I wanted to... I wanted to rip his throat out like Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse, which is something they did not do in the new Roadhouse, which was bullshit in my opinion. I wanted to kill this guy. I was ready to give it all up right now to send a message to that guy right then and there. You don't deserve to be here. And I'm going to make sure I take you to the place you deserve to go. And that's the afterlife. I was so angry. I was ready to go to jail for the rest of my life just to get the satisfaction of killing this guy. I wanted him dead. The, the, the response as if we never saw each other after we just saw each other four times in a row and had conversations with each other. We had a conversation four times in a row. And he acted like this was the first time. What I there was there hasn't been a person I wanted to punch more than that guy. And I wanted the punch to be with a brass knuckles or some sort of metal glove, like a knight's glove, so that it would just take him right to the afterlife. That's how angry I was at the, at this point. And I know I don't you don't want to be a murderer. Obviously, I'm 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 not gonna kill a guy for this, but I wanted to. I definitely wanted to. And then what I really wanted to do was go talk to his stupid wife and be like, hey, Janice, this is this your man? What what's going on in your life that you think that this is this is somebody you want to spend the rest of your life with? What the hell is going on between the between your ears? She she should have got slapped for that too. I'm sure that's what she wanted though. She wanted someone that she can control and run the show. Cuz that was her personality type. It was very apparent. She was she was the boss. But imagine being the mother, the wife there. And now if you have kids, I don't know how she would have sex with that guy. He'd probably forget. He'd probably block her block himself from doing insertion and not even know what to do. I don't know how she would have sex with that guy. I don't know how you would want to. But imagine having kids with that. Now she's going to take care of the children and this absolute boob. He was an absolute clueless boob. Just going through life clueless to anything around him. Anything around him. And now I got to deal with the post office doing it too. Your entire existence is reading envelopes and packages, seeing the location on these envelopes and packages, and getting them to those locations, those correct locations. That is all you have to do. It's not like it's on your way to go do your primary duties of something else, like protecting the president or something. No. Your job is to read the letters, read the envelopes and the packages and see what addresses they are on. And then make sure that those packages get to those addresses. It's not that hard. It's it's difficult in the sense that there's a lot of mail out there. And you got to sort it out. And, and and logistically create the most effective way to get the, the mailmen out to the destinations. And you got to figure out the best way to go on your route to deliver the mail efficiently. Yeah, that's difficult to figure out. But guess what? Most of it's figured out already. We've been delivering mail for hundreds and hundreds of years. Okay? The mail has been around. 
They know the routes. And when there's new streets and new houses on blocks and stuff like that, they just add on. You don't have to re they're not reinventing the wheel. The routes are there. All you have to do is pick up your bags of mail, get in your truck, and drive to the addresses on the envelopes. And then look at the streets that you're physically on. You have to know which street name you're on when you're driving, when you're turning onto that street. How do you not know? How do you know you're in the right place if you don't know which street you're on? I don't understand that. Who is just driving? I'm going to turn left here. Hope it's the right street. I'm not going to look, though. I'm not going to pay attention. Oh, this house has the same number as I'm supposed to go. Hopefully, again, everything is hunky-dory. I'm just going to throw this package here and hope for the best. Job well done, post office guy, postman. Like, what are we doing here? If it happens again, I I hope I'm at the house. I hope I'm at the house so I can catch him in the act and have a conversation with him for the fourth time. Because you know what happens when Labretti has conversations with somebody for the fourth time, apparently. Apparently, that's when I lose my mind. And I am on the brink of it right now with these people. Okay? And I know I can't control the stupidity going on around me. I can only respond to it. And how I choose to respond is going to be how my day goes and my happiness and whatever. But when it's directly affecting me, now I'm in control. Now I'm taking over. Okay? If you're sending my packages to somebody else and you're sending their packages to me and it's becoming a problem for us and I'm involved, I'm taking control. Okay? If you're blocking the aisle that I'm directly trying to walk through, Four times in a row, I'm taking control of that situation. If I'm turning left and you're trying to pass me on the left at the same time as if you don't even see my giant black truck that looks like Darth Vader, I'm taking control of the situation. Okay? Anything else, the stupidity and cluelessness going on that doesn't affect me, that affects others, whatever, I'm not going to let it get to me. Do I see a lot of stupidity? All the time. Constantly. People are being inconsiderate and rude and clueless to others around them constantly. And I don't care. Like, I just go, I was like, hey, not my chair, not my problem. But once it becomes my chair, it becomes my problem. Okay? And you know what I do when I have legit problems that I got to deal with. So, that's that. I'm going long already. I don't know what will be going in an hour almost. Jesus. Not even at the junction yet. But we got we to gotta hustle through this stuff. All right. Real quick. Very quickly because I didn't do too much research. And uh, I don't want to be the third to go down. But a, another, a second Boeing whistleblower has been tragically found dead. Tragically and suddenly and mysteriously found dead. Okay, this time the guy was a healthy mid 40s guy, exercised every day, worked out, ate right. All of a sudden, got this weird sickness, had to go to the hospital, developed MRSA, MRSA, the staph infection kind of thing. I think it's a staph infection, and died randomly, mysteriously, right after he was testifying against Boeing. How many more bodies have to pile up before people start to realize this is not a kooky conspiracy theory? This is not just strange coincidences. Okay? It's, cr it's crazy to me that people still think that. Like, oh, it's just strange coincidence, all, this, all these deaths that keep happening when big events happen occur. All these deaths to protect the, the evil just happen, to happen at the same time. It's not a coincidence, folks. You can call me crazy all you want, okay? But we're going to be looking back at these years from now, okay? That's usually what we do. We go back, we look at historical events like Nazism and the Holocaust, and you say, everyone says the same thing. How could all those German people 
just become Nazis like that? How can they have not have seen what a bad guy Hitler was and just followed him like that and became Nazis and did all this stuff? But when you're in the middle of it, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're in the middle of it, things are a little foggy, aren't they, folks? Okay, we're seeing it now. We're seeing it now. With the with the lockdowns, I got roped into the lockdowns, and I have no problem admitting my mistake. But I talked about it on an episode years ago, back in 2020, when I thought the two weeks was going to be, I was, I was like, okay, let's just give it a shot. Just stay home. Just shut up and stay home for two weeks. That's all it'll take, just two weeks. I got roped right in. Right into the to the absolute lie that was the two weeks to stop the stop the spread. And what happened? The two weeks turned into over a year. And nothing got better. And then the four and then the mandated vaccines and the whole debacle happened. And there's still people out there refusing to admit that we were. We were dicked around by our own government. And I, I have no problem admitting, like, my fault. I was duped. I fell right in. But I jumped out pretty quickly after that. After about a month, I was like, this is not just two weeks. Time to jump out. So when, you, so when we go look at history at this moment, and everyone's saying it's just a coincidence, it's just a coincidence, it's just a coincidence. You're going to look back on all the information. You're going to look and you're like, how did we not, how did people not see how obvious this was that these are cover up kills? And then someone's going to have to explain to that person, well, when you're in the moment, things get a little foggy and people don't want to admit to this stuff and then this and that. And, and, and you say to yourself, that's crazy. I would never do something like that. If I had all this evidence in front of my face, there's no way I would I would think it's this and that. And then you get you get into the fog yourself and around and around and around we go. So I'll be the crazy guy now. I love being the crazy I don't care. I am the crazy guy. I walk around all the time with a fanny pack on so everyone already thinks I'm crazy just by the looks of me. I'll be the crazy guy to say this crazy wild shit because it'll be on record now when I'm long gone and my great-great-grandkids are looking at history and they're saying, damn, why didn't anybody listen to this guy? Why didn't anyone listen to great-great-grandpa Sarji? I don't know either, kid. I have no idea either. So another whistleblower, rest in power. All right, really quick. <clears throat> Before we get into the junction, really quick, the Yankees, okay? They did it again, okay? Last time we talked about them, I said this. I said that every time I talk about the Yankees on the show, it's at the end of a week where they stink it up, and I keep telling everybody, don't be fooled. Because they don't have the stopping power, they don't have the team and and the skill set and and the substitution, you know, the backup players, the bench to be competitive in the playoffs. But they're going to trick you each and every time. And I'm going to post this, and then in the beginning of the week, the Yankees are going to come out swinging and crushing the ball, and everyone's going to say, "So oh, they shut you up," and they do for a couple of days, and they go right back into it. And then by the time it gets to the week's end, where I'm talking about the Yankees. They're in stink mode again. And this around and around and around we go there. And guess what, folks? It happened again. I posted last week's episode, what was it, 210 or whatever? And they went on a on a tear the first two games after I posted that episode. They won like 18, they won, you know, 18 something, 15 something, two games in a row. And everyone was like, oh, they're crushing, they're crushing, they're crushing. Then the bats died. And they got schooled by the Orioles for three of the four games. I think they snuck away with one win. And then they barely beat the Tiger. Now, a win's a win. It doesn't say in the, in the, in the scorebook, barely wins. They won, but they had no hits. They had three total hits going into the ninth inning. 
of the game. They were down one nothing, and they came away with like a walk, two hits, and the and the victory, the walk off victory, which is fine. I'll take the win, but the commentators said in that game too, and this is exactly what I've been saying. They don't, they they can't be doing, they can't be crushing one game and completely dead the next game. And one of the good things that uh, an interesting thing that was said, and I don't know if it was, I think the creatures said it before, but they these commentators said it as well that. A good team, like there's ups and downs in hitting in baseball. You're gonna have, you're gonna be in a slump, and you're gonna come out on fire. You're gonna be in a slump again. It's it's cyclical, okay. But the good teams, when a couple of players are down, the other couple in the lineup are up, and they're always picking each other up. And when when one is up and one the the others down, others down, others up, and it just goes like that. And they protect each other that way, and they keep it going, and they keep being able to compete because of that. But the Yankees don't do that. They can't do that for some reason. They're either all up or they're all down. There's nobody there picking up the slack except for like Juan Soto, basically. He's the only one who's who seems to be doing consistently, seems to be hitting consistently, excuse me, regardless. Now, he's not super high up. And he's not super high down. He's sort of in the middle, just maintaining, maintaining the ship. He's the only one. Otherwise, it's everybody up or everybody down. And you can't have that. You can't compete in the playoffs like that. Because when you're down, that's it. It's all it's all over, folks. So they have to figure that out. I don't know. They have to get other players. Mix things up a bit. I mean, you can't have two catchers that are batting under 200. That's those are guaranteed outs. No matter who you put at the plate there, who you put behind the plate as a catcher, both of them are not super spectacular catchers anymore. Trevino used to be really, you know, he had a good year. But and he works hard. I, I like both the catchers, Austin Wells and, and Trevino, but they both stink at the plate right now. So they're guaranteed outs. Guaranteed outs. You know when they're up, it was like, oh, that's an out. You gotta figure something else out. They still have DJ LeMahieu out for God knows how long. Aaron Judge has been stinking it up lately. Stan stinking it up. I mean, decent for him, I guess, but not really. So they got to figure it out. The same thing's going to happen as soon as I post this. Episode 211, let's check it out. <laughs> it's going to happen. The Yankees are going to go on a tear. And everyone's going to think, oh, they're, they're back, baby. The New York Yankees are back. And then they're going to go stink it up. Now, at least their attitude is still good. I could tell their attitude has changed from last year. I like that. Will it take them you know, farther in the playoffs? I don't know. I mean, they didn't make the playoffs last year, so who the hell knows. But that's all I got to say about that before I get angry. Flapping my gills all day. We've been talking I don't know how long. I wanted this to be a short episode but it's going to be probably the longest ever. Anyway, let's get to the good stuff. All right? We'll step into the cage. Okay, let's run. All right, today's Into the Cage segment is proudly sponsored by Paulie's Pest Control. Do you have cockroaches infiltrating your house and starting to take over? Do you have rodents making themselves at home in your pantry and your kitchen? Do you have a neighbor knocking on your door every day asking for money and goods? Then call Paulie's Pest Control today. Paulie guarantees he'll be able to control any pest problem you might have and ensures you won't have to deal with it again. How does he do it? Don't ask questions you don't want the answer to, says Paulie. So to get rid of your pest problem once and for all, go to the nearest payphone and call 1-800-NO-PESTS. And if you use the code Parmesan, you'll get a free box of rat poison. It's that time of year here, folks, in, in Texas, where I'm located, where the bugs and, and, and rodents and, and roaches start to come around, and I have to be taken care of. Now, I've done some pre preliminary work already with the pest control around my house, and I have to do the periodic work, because I see them, I see the bugs outside, uh, 
<clears throat> and I don't want them inside. That's all. And we're not going to have a war with the Rochis again because I don't want, I don't, I'm tired. I need a break. I just got back from a war. So I'd like to take a break here. So, all right. The cage fact. This is crazy. But I believe it because I'm biased and I don't mind saying it. Nick Cage was doing an interview and he was talking about um, movie roles and family and this and that. And they were asking him about his role in Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. And one of the reasons we've talked about this in the past, you know, he didn't want to initially do the role because he thought it was going to be a mockery of him. Um, and then also the other reason why he was a little hesitant was because the character was not being a good father. He was too self-centered and too, you know, cared only about his career and wasn't a good father. And Nick Cage said that's, you know, the exact opposite. He's like, if nothing else, I care about being a father to my kids and being a good dad as much as possible. Even if he doesn't, if even if he misses the mark on the on being a good husband. He said, you know, I make a lot of mistakes, but I always like that's the opposite of me. I'm always going to be there as a father. He goes, in fact, I turned down roles in Lord of the Rings and The Matrix because they were filming overseas and it would have taken him away from his kids for too long. And they couldn't go out there, obviously, when filming it because they have school and, and whatnot. But. Lord of the Rings was filmed in New Zealand. Matrix was filmed in Australia. He would have been out for a long time for both of those. Now, imagine Nick Cage in either of those movies. Or those, those sagas, because they ended up being more than one movie. What where would Nick Cage be? I mean, he's already at the top for me. That's, you know, but imagine where he would be in, in, in the annals of, of celebrity history. If, if just coming off of face off and, and Con Air and, and the rock. Now he does the matrix. And then after that, Lord of the Rings, are you kidding me? He would have been the number one guy in Hollywood over everybody. And it wouldn't have even been close. Leonardo DiCaprio, nope. Bob De Niro, nope. Scorsese, nope. Robert Downey Jr., nope. Nobody else. He would have been untouchable. If he was both Matrix and Lord of the Rings, forget about it. But he's a father first. He's a father first. And I got to respect that. So that's the cage fact. We're going to go, you know, go through that quickly here. All right, moving on over to the junction. We'll spin the logo up. We got some hotline calls, and then we're going to call it a day. Okay, I appreciate the people calling in. I love the hotline calls. I want to do that's This is what I like to do. Like, this is great. I could just... Answer hotlines. Makes things fun and easy and um, a good time. So that's what we're going to do. So stand by and we'll take this first call here. Let me get this straight. You're attacking 20% of your audience for giving you these calls in, giving you good ideas and how to make a better show. All right. Maybe I'm trying to help you apply your big three in a manner that can connect to your audience, maybe expand your audience. And all I hear is you want Nick Cage, go watch it yourself, all right? I come to the Lebrady Diary podcast show to get my fill in Nick Cage. And all I want is the big three to be applied to a movie, all right? A little, little review about a Nick Cage movie you've seen and talk about how he did or did not meet up to your standards of the big three. I think that seems like a good enough suggestion, but you're attacking me. You're attacking the union, all right? Unions built this country, all right? And unions can take down this show. Keep it up. All right. Thank you for the call. Good call. This guy's angry. 
he sounds like he's driving. I hear, I don't know if it was a blinker or windshield wipers or what have you, but he's angry and driving. He's probably going to cut somebody off and road rage them. Uh, but thanks for the call. Listen. I stand by my comment. Okay. I can only give so much of my time for zero dollars. Okay. I'm not swimming in cash. I'm not swimming in free time. Just like I know you're not. And once again, I, re I will refer you back to what I said the last time this union leader called. It, it, maybe if you just adjust your tone a little bit. I've known this fella for a long time. He's a good guy, brother in arms, a trench guy. I'd go, I, you know, I'd be in the trenches with him, no problem. But I also know that he has pushed away not opportunities, but he has pushed away people from giving him chances and providing him opportunities for things because of how he approaches people and situations. And I and I think deep down he knows that. And he doesn't care because he's also, you know, a big time union leader because of his, you know, because of who he is. So good on him for that. But all you have to do is ask nicely and then we can have the conversation. And I know you don't want to hear that because you're a big tough New Yorker and it's like, well, you should be a man. I don't I shouldn't have to ask nicely. You should see through blah blah. blah. Yeah, maybe I should, but I don't. And when somebody is on the hotline attacking me for doing something that only you want and also requires a lot of extra work. I watch Nick Cage movies for me. I love Nick Cage myself. Okay? I'm very happy that you also enjoy Nick Cage movies and Nick Cage the actor. And you want to get more information out of there. That's great. Let's have a, an adult, mature conversation about how we can do that together as opposed to making these crazy demands. This is not the union, fella, okay? I don't even like what unions have become these days. Unions used to be there to protect the workers and make sure that they weren't getting stiffed by the employers. And what has happened? Union employees still get stiffed, but now the union leaders are in bed with the employers and the politicians and they're getting and they're getting all the extra benefits, all the bennies. And they keep lying to their union members. Don't worry, I got your back. I'm taking care of you. But in reality, they're still getting stiffed. They're still getting worked. The only thing, the only leverage they have is they could go on strike if they want. And that's about it for the most part. So you might be able to get away with that type of attitude over at the unions, but this is not a union gig here, fella. Okay. If we, if you want to make, if you want me help, help me make this show better. Let's come to the table like adults. Let's have an adult conversation, come up with a good game plan of how we're going to be able to watch these new Nick Cage movies and identify how Nick Cage follows the big three in each of his roles. If he does, and then we can have, and we can add it to the to the cage segment, to the into the cage segment. I have no problem talking about that. Like I said, I love Nick Cage. I'm going to be watching the movies anyway. But once again, as soon as somebody attacks and tells me I have to do something, or I'm stupid for not doing something, or what are you thinking? I'm going to do the opposite. I'm just going to do the opposite. Okay. Half because that I don't take that shit from people. Okay? I'll take a lot of your shit if you're really nice to me. You can manipulate me a lot better that way. If you're looking to manipulate somebody, that's how I get manipulated. You be nice to me. You pretend you care. But if you're coming out barking orders and being angry and, and aggressive, yeah, half of me is going to say no because I don't take that shit. The other half is going to say no because... I know it kind of gets you pissed off. Not you specifically, union leader, but in general. 
when people are most people who are like that who who direct you and tell you to do stuff get mad when you don't they for whatever reason they're emotionally attached to that thing and they get mad at you and i like to have a little fun sometimes with that stuff so yeah keep coming at me the same way and this and the same results going to happen that's called insanity by the way fella okay Doing the same thing, expecting a different result, different outcome, just to let you know. But I love the call. I like the back and forth. I don't mind it. Keep it coming. Keep coming. If you want to keep coming at me, keep coming at me. At the very least, it's going to be a great call. It's going to be a real great call to listen to. So thank you for that. I love you. We'll get to the next call here. Oh, everybody. Um, I just got done listening. I just want to say... That uh, I disagree with the caller when he uh, asked for less salad tossing talk. I'd like to hear more about that and uh, more more about this character, London Boy. How old is he? You know, uh, just just curious. Uh, hey. All right, uh, Mickey Mouse. Thanks again for the call. Another call. Another week. Another another Mickey Mouse hotline. Uh, London Boy is probably out of your age range. He's an adult. Don't know why he calls himself London Boy still, um, but hopefully, hopefully the update on London Boy was was sufficient enough for you there, Mickey Mouse. Um, I, I, that's a good Mickey Mouse impression. Let's be honest; it's a good impression. I don't exactly know how you found out you were good at that. If you do it for kids or your kids, I mean, not. Other strange kids at parks and stuff don't do that. But um, yeah, uh, we're definitely not talking about salad stuff anymore. That was terrible. That shit's not, that shit's boring. All right. And we're certainly not talking about salad tossing stuff over here, unless we have a professional salad tosser we're going to have on the show. So, Mickey, if you have any, you know, salad tossing professionals or anyone with experience in it and that you want them to be on, a, you know, on the show as a guest, let me know. And we'll try to get him on. So, uh, but thank you for the call, M Mickey Mouse. What a strange show this is. All right, <laughs> next call. <laughs> yeah, I just want to know how you can uh, talk about this muck for twenty minutes about how this muck means so much to you and it reminds you of all these things, right? And then at the same time. You then get angry at your friends, your fan base, for sending you Nick Cage thing that you posted on your social media. I'm sorry to, to break this to you, but people's uh, lives do not revolve around watching your social media. But you know what? When people see something like uh, Nick Cage, silly thing, they think of you. All right? And I want to reach out and let you know that they think of you. And here you are. You're attacking your fan base again. You know, you're putting up these expectations that people have to watch, you know, all your Instagrams and your social medias and your YouTube page. People are lost, all right? But uh, Nick Cage is kind of like the mug for Labretti, all right? Probably because, you know, uh, these, uh, these, these mugs, they have that uh, thing off to the side, you know, that big thing off to the side, sort of like your nose, like your big nose, all right? Take care. And take care to you too. Thanks for that call. Uh, look, my nose is like a like a mug handle. It def definitely is. I've seen some mug handles that the way that they're shaped because you know sometimes people get a little artsy fartsy when they're when they're creating mugs, you know, to be different. And I've seen some that looked they're not functionally sound. You know, it's tough to hold on to those types of of mug handles. But I've seen some that are like somebody looked at my side profile and decided to make a mug out of it. So, um, yeah, or an upside down mug. Sometimes the mug handle is straight at the top and then curved around the bottom. You know, I can't do it right now, but you flip it upside down and then it kind of looks like a nose. I don't know. Um, look at the little teacup from Beauty and the Beast. If you flip that bastard upside down, he's got now he's got a libretti nose. His handle is now a schnoz. So you're not wrong there. Here's the point of contention I have with your call because you did a little bit of gaslighting there and I'm not going to stand for it. I did not say 
I was angry about people sending me Nick Cage stuff. I said, people send me Nick Cage stuff, and 99.9% .9 of the time, I've already seen it. But I'm never going to discourage people from sending me more Nick Cage stuff. That's exactly what I said. You could go back to the tape. I'm not going to do all the little editing to put the clip in here to let you know, but I will put the link to the site on this side over here in YouTube land, and you could go back to the episode, episode 210, where I talk about it, where I said, hey, keep the Nick Cage stuff coming. I've seen it. I've, more than likely, I've already seen it, but I'm never going to tell you to not send me Nick Cage stuff because you never know when I'm not going to see it for the first time, and that'll be the first time I see it. So um, we're not gaslighting here, okay? I know you're trying to turn the fan base against me, and again, that might work for the union that you you lord over, but it's not going to work here at the LPDS. We're better than that, and you know it. But I do appreciate the call, so I encourage you to keep calling in, and I'm never going to discourage you from doing that, so thank you for that. All right, I think we got one more call here. Let me check, and uh, we'll get after it. I couldn't help but think back when I'm looking at the Bone Crusher's call in about how is it that he hasn't been invited back how is it that he didn't win guests of the year? And I thought to myself, you know what? I think there was some other shady stuff going on with a Labretti Diary, Diary podcast show when it came to voting about the best Christmas movie, right? And I believe the one that should have got first place based on the rules that were outlined was taken down a notch or two because of uh, some bullshit that Labretti didn't, didn't see that his top dog was going to get it. So he had to, you know, cook the books. I think this is a pattern. I think we need to have some sort of oversight, maybe get the UN, here, UN in here to watch these uh, these voting and count the votes. I don't, I don't trust you. I don't trust this. All right. Thank you for the call. Thank you for your concern. Uh, it has been noted. Um, but when we did the Christmas movie episodes, it was a two-parter. Uh, I don't even remember if we didn't vote. We didn't vote for the best one. We put out for the fans what their favorite was, and we put up the stats of the favorites. So we put up the numbers of the like what movie had the most favorited, you know, clicks with the mo you know what the fans said the most that that was their favorite. I'm trying to think of a better way to say that to communicate that, and I'm struggling right now because I'm a jabroni sometimes, but. We said, what is your favorite Christmas movie? What are your top five favorite Christmas movies? In no particular order. And we got the input back. We got the data back. And the data said 15 people said their favorite movie was whatever, Home Alone or whatever it was. And we and then we ranked them. Like 20 people said this. So this is at the top. And that's, that's how we put it out. We didn't vote for the number one movie. We didn't vote for anything on our end. We just took in the data. Okay? So... The people you're trying to turn against the LPDS are the same people that you're calling out inadvertently thinking that the numbers were fudged because your movie didn't get more uh, accolades, I guess, or praise. And if the movie were at question is Christmas Chronicles, which is a phenomenal movie on Netflix, there's actually two of them, both very good. I think I like the first one a little bit better. But they're both good movies with um, Kurt Russell as Santa Claus. So go check them out on Netflix. I believe they're still on there. Love those movies. They're fantastic Christmas movies. I was never dogging on them. And once again, I'm going to call you out for gaslighting and trying to turn the people against me for no reason, because just other than you're mad. What you're mad at, I don't know. I don't know who hurt you. I don't know if you got wronged. I don't know uh, where on the doll you were touched. I just don't know what happened in your life, but you're a very angry union leader. You're aggressively making angry phone calls on in the middle of car rides. I don't know where you're going. I hope you get there safely, though. It sounds like you're emotionally uh, distraught, to say the least. And I hope you got to your location safely and you were able to take a couple of deep breaths, maybe take an LPDS step back from it all. And think about why am I so angry at this guy who's just trying 
to put stuff out there for people. I know he's got good intent. I know he admits when he makes mistakes and he's trying and he's doing his best. And I, and I'm still angry and I don't know why I need to figure out why I'm still angry. Ask yourself that fella, please. I love, I love this guy. Whoever he is, it's anonymous, <laughs> this anonymous hotline caller, but he sounds very angry and I hope he's going to be okay. And if you want to be a guest on the show, come on out anytime you want. But I can assure you there's no funny business going on with guests and voting and what have you. This is, this is what happens when you have a one-man show. Okay? Mistakes get made. Thoroughness is, is slightly less. You know, we're less thorough in things and following up and, and getting stuff done comprehensively. And hand up, that's on me because it's a one-man show. And the buck stops here. But just, just the argument falls, you know, on its face, just thinking about it immediately, just the initial thought of when, when do I have the time to fudge numbers and alter votes and 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 make certain people win certain things? For my own benefit. When do I have time to do that? A. B. Why? What is the point of it? I don't get any money out of this show. I want to get any extra money from giving somebody else a guest of the year or giving it a movie, uh, the number one Christmas movie rating. There's nothing I, I gain out of it. Okay? And if I had all that extra time to do stuff like that, don't you think I would go... And and do your little idea of how Nick Cage follows the big three in his movies or doesn't follow the big three in his movies. Don't you think I would do that first instead of trying to be nefarious? Can you give me the benefit of the doubt a little bit? I don't. Again, I don't know who hurt you to where you think everybody is doing. The first thing that you're that comes in your mind is that it's got to be a nefarious reason behind why people do the things they do. That's sad. I feel bad for you for that reason. I really do, and I hope you get the help you deserve and need. But don't gaslight me and my fans. We're not getting the UN here to count votes. Do you really trust the UN to count votes for anything? I don't trust them to do anything. I don't trust our government to do anything. So is that what you really want? I don't think so. I think you and I both know there's probably a better way to, to, to do that. Maybe when I'm rich, I can hire someone to help me with, you know, on the due diligence side of things. But we're not gaslighting here, okay? You can call me out all you want, but we're not lying. We don't stand for it at the LP. This is not the Lion Podcast Diary Show. It's a Libretti Podcast Diary Show. And that's another thing. It's Libretti Podcast Diary Show, LPDS. Now, I know that's some sort of old school bully tactic where you purposely get the name wrong because then you think it's going to get you angry every time. It's like, actually, it's not it. It's, it's this. It's not my name. It's this, this, this. I know the tactic. I've done it before. Okay. I know that bully tactic. What you call Ben Bryan and, and, and Tyler Taylor. Like, and you just purposely do that. Just a little thing to get to somebody, get to somebody, get to somebody. I got it. All right. I know what you're trying to do here. I know those moves. I commend you for those moves. They're power moves. But they're getting called out here. That's it. Okay, we're not doing that shit in the LPDS. Thank you for the call, though. Keep them coming. I love these calls. I don't care what they're about. I don't care. Call me out. Gaslight me. Lie. I'm, I'm going to call you out You know, in response. But I love this calls. I, I, you know, 202-670-1114. That's all I got today, folks. I've been going for too long. Before we go, the big three, the three pillars to staying strong and being a better, happier, kinder, healthier, more genuine human being and spreading that goodness throughout the land. Number one, exercise every day, whether it's a physical, mental, or emotional exercise. Do one thing every day to improve your health and wellness physically, mentally, emotionally. Number two, don't be a shitty person. Be a kind person. When the opportunity arises in your life to be shitty or negative to somebody, instead of actually taking that opportunity and being shitty and negative to them, even if they deserve it, even if they've wronged you, 
and you're trying to get them back and they and they need that karma, take the step back, remove yourself, detach from your emotions, and omit yourself from the situation so that you can minimize the negativity going on in the world and the shit going on in the world, and you can allow yourself the capacity to go focus on more positive, productive things. Number three, the most important one, be genuinely thankful and grateful for all the good you have in your lives because you never know when it's going to be gone. Okay, you can do this. You can start doing this by thinking about one thing every day in your life, one good thing in your life, and thinking about what it would be like, what your life would be like without that thing and how shitty it would be, and that puts you in that state of gratitude immediately. And then every day, you start thinking about more things and you add on to it. Now you're thinking about five things throughout your day, five different times throughout your day, six different times, whatever. Before you know it, you're going to be filled with gratitude all the time. Okay? And if you couple that with not being a shitty person and you couple that with exercising every day, I promise you guys, you're going to be a better, happier, kinder, healthier, more genuine human being, and you'll be able to spread that goodness and positivity throughout the land. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell your friends and enemies. And hit that hotline, 202-670-1114. Hit the hotline call with anything at any time. Leave the voicemail. We'll play it on the, on the next episodes, and we'll have a good time doing it. Thank you guys again. I love you all. Stay strong.